So this laser behind me is a brand new model called the P2, and it's from a company called Acmer, which is probably the best company you've never heard of. They're new on the scene. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why this might be the best laser of 2023. So let's get going. Hey, it's Steve. I wanna start this video by saying as a YouTuber, I get the privilege of looking at a lot of brand new lasers, but I'll be honest with you, no matter whose name is on the outside of the box, when you open it, they're all fundamentally the same. You pull out a big pile of parts, you put the rails together and screw in a handful of screws in each corner. Sometimes you have to run the belts, sometimes you have to string cable, it just sucks. So when Acmer sent me this P2 to look at, I was honestly expecting the same thing. So I don't normally cover setup in videos, but I'll do it in this video and, and there's a reason. I wanna show you what the difference between a typical laser and this laser is. But before we jump into setup, let's take a quick look at the specs here. I just pulled this off of Acmer's website. Uh, you can see the speed here is a mind boggling 30,000 millimeters a minute. Uh, and the work area is 420 by 400 millimeters. So good size and definitely good speed. It's got all the standard safety features, including a flame detector that you can turn off. I don't know if you've used uh, certain lasers I've, I've seen where the flame detector just arbitrarily goes off. Uh, and sometimes it's daylight that does it. It's just a pain. So uh, Acma allows you to turn it off and there's a switch underneath the front panel. So good ideas and uh, definitely good specs on this laser. So the first thing you're gonna notice about this laser is when you take it out of the box, it's assembled. You really don't have to do a whole lot other than drop the laser module onto the harness that, that it mounts on. And it has a really nice thumb screw there so it's easy to hook up. You plug the air hose in, then the power for the laser module. And next you hook up the air pump. So the air hose is already run for you. All the cables are already strung. Uh, plug the hose in, then the mount or the power for the pump is underneath the front and plug in the cables on the side, the power and USB cables, and they're nicely on the side there. Uh, drop the key in the top, turn on the E switch and hit the power. And that's really all you have to do. This laser literally took me five minutes to, to get set up and, and to the point where I actually started a job. All right, once it's assembled, what do you get? Well, you get emergency stop, all the standard controls and alarm. Along the X and Y axes, you get these really nice industrial rails. Now, on the front and back, everything's closed in. There's a, a port there for a rotary. Cable handling is excellent here. It looks really clean. And when it comes to the laser module, you get the standard manual focus flip down and a really nice, easy to access thumb wheel to raise and lower the laser. And it's just a fantastic laser. All right, so with the laser running, I started my, my standard tests here. So a cut test, and you can see it working there. Then I did a, an engraving test, and finally I did this gradient test. And you can see it, it produces really nice grayscale gradient. But what really matters is what it looks like. So here's the cut test. You can see it cut all the way up to 900 millimeters a minute, which is incredible. The back looks really clean, except for that, that low speed. Engraving here, the lower right corner is a really, really deep engrave, and you can see it drops out a bit at 10 percent. Uh, and the gradient test, we're gonna be engraving around 10,000 millimeters a minute, which I used for the dog uh, image here and it is one of the best engravings of this image that I've seen on any diode laser. So not only does the P2 look good, it acts well too, and that's uh, pretty phenomenal. So since I had a bit of extra time today and Acmer was good enough to send me a material pack, I thought I'd play around a little bit just to see what this laser can really do over and above what I would normally use, use a diode laser for. So, I opened the, the material pack and they were good enough to include this setting sheet, which isn't deadly accurate settings, but for any given material, it has a recommended setting where you can start. And I, I thought I'd try it out and, and with some of the materials they included. So I started with this piece of 29 millimeter square polonia I found in the box. It's a fast growing wood from China. Now there wasn't actually a setting for this, so I guessed and I apparently guessed wrong because I ended up having to pry this open. I used 60 millimeters per minute at 100%, and I probably could have gone down to 50, or maybe I could have just done two passes and it would have got all the way through, but you can see there that the output 
the cut was actually relatively clean. Uh, I mean, the laser is out of focus for a, a probably half of this cut, so it, it, but it still ended up looking fairly good. So then I took one of the, the key tags that they provided, and these look like they're about one eighth uh, solid oak. So I guessed again, there wasn't a specific material setting for these either, but it looked actually okay in the end. You can see the end there is a little bit thin, which means I probably could have used a bit more power. So Acmar also included a fairly robust piece of stainless steel. It looks like it's about 3 16 uh, maybe an eighth. And I engraved my logo on it using their default settings, which is 3000 millimeters a minute in speed and 100% power. And when you take a look at this, uh, you can see how remarkable this is considering how fast we were going. So I'm really impressed with, uh, with the general operation here. And finally, they included this absolutely monumental piece of acrylic. It's 29.6 millimeters thick, and I tried to cut it. And I used 60 millimeters a minute uh, speed at 100% power and three passes. And uh, it took quite a while, but it actually worked really well. I was, I was shocked. And when it was done, I did have to kind of break it apart. I don't know if it was not cut all the way through or whether it re refused at the, at the end. But uh, when I did get it apart, and it wasn't really that hard, but when I did get it apart, you can see the, the cut edges here are just remarkably smooth. So I was both impressed and surprised that it got through this at all. Since the Acmer P2 does come with a rotary attachment, I thought I'd give it a shot and I don't have the Acmer rotary, so uh, I thought I'd try something else. I do have an RA2 Pro and lots of people do ask if Rotary X works with laser Y, so here's a good example to, to give it a shot. And the first thing I need to do is lift up the laser and nothing says hack like using pink can lids to lift up the laser. Uh, then I dropped the RA2 Pro down because I have one and plugged it in. Now I will warn you in advance that the RA2 Pro takes a straight uh, connector, straight cable, and the cable that comes with the Acmer P2 is a crossover, so you do need to use the one that came with the RA2 Pro. After that, it's just a case of doing the engraving, uh, and I just did a little sample here. And if you look at the output, uh, it certainly says test and it's certainly on a, on a tube. So clearly the rotary works and big success here. So use any rotary you want and uh, you won't be disappointed here. It's pretty clear I think the Acma P2 is a great product and honestly an amazing laser in part because that first out of the box experience starts you off right. Uh, you open the box and you take the laser out and it's basically assembled. Now you can still get the kit version of this laser if you need to assemble it yourself or you, you're trying to save a bit of money, uh, you can do that. Uh, also on the experience front, there's uh, uh, Acmer has provided a phone app that you can install on either your iPhone or your Android phone and you can control the laser from there in addition to light burn and laser gerbil of course. Uh, next on the list here, uh, they used high grade materials and I'll start with the linear rails on both the X and Y axes, which uh, apparently makes Acmer the first company to do this. Those linear rails give you much better accuracy. Also, the manual focus here, they have that big knob for, for loosening and tightening the laser module and, and the pop down stick. The, the manual focus here is, is again one of the best I've ever seen. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of autofocus, but I would guarantee you with the focus on this laser, you, could, you can focus this laser faster yourself anyway. So uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, and last on the, on the pro side here, not specifically related to the laser, but more the aura around the company and the laser. There's good community support. Uh, there's a Facebook group that you can go to and the company is also well invested in the community. They're having uh, a contest right now and I'll pop up the, the poster here. Uh, you or whether you have an Acmer laser or not can join this, this contest and potentially win some money. Uh, looks like a lot of fun. So, so the, they're there on the community side. Now on the con side, there were a couple of things I think they could work on. Uh, honestly, I'm nitpicking here because this is really an amazing laser. But first on the list here, there is no crosshair sight. So their major competition for this laser would be something like, a, like an X2D1 Pro. 
and that has that sight so you know exactly where the laser is going to start engraving or cutting on your material. Of course you can use the light burn framing and get the same thing. Now in fairness the the front glass on this laser is much more transparent I'd say than some of the other lasers I've seen so the need for that crosshair is probably a little less. Uh, you can actually see through the glass to, to position your material as well. Uh, last on the list here, or second on the list, I guess, on the con side, uh, this laser is a bit loud. When the laser is on, the fan on the laser module is running and it screams, uh, unlike, again, the D1 Pro, where the fan is only on when the laser is working. Uh, it would be really nice because if, you know, if you're in a workshop like I am, sometimes the laser is just on and you're not working on it, you're working on something else and that fan's just screaming. Anyway, nothing, nothing big there, but I think there's just these little tweaks that would make, uh, you know, a great laser just incredibly awesome and separate them completely from all the competition. So if you are in the market for a new laser, maybe you're upgrading or maybe you're just getting started, I would highly recommend this laser. I think it's probably the best laser of 2023 so far. And, uh, you know, I think you could probably end there. But if you are in the market and you're shopping around, then maybe you want to check this video out up above and compare the Acmer P2 to something like the longer B1. And with that, we can wind down. So get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.